Boom. Okay. We're looking good in here. Um, I just replaced this iPod battery, and this is the old one. Look at that. There's a little bit of veining going on there. Oof. So I get to dispose of that now, which should, should just be a blast. And then I have this working iPod here. It uh, needs a little bit more work done. Managed to tear the lock cable because this was glued on so thick and accidentally jumped and cut that ribbon. But I got this going and then if you check this out, she lives. New battery, I got a uh, SSD drive in here. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I was just kind of stoked about that. Still dealing with this. Uh, I have this K1000 here that I really do need to get some work done on. I was going to do that really briefly while I set this up because this is it. This is the final part of a three-part series going over my trip so I was rereading the manual for this the other day and I realized that I've been calling this the aperture resistor, which technically that's what it is, but the proper terminology is diaphragm resistor, diaphragm and speed resistor. But I think you understand what I'm saying when I say it. So hopefully that tracks, if not, and if you've just been like secretly getting very angry, like, oh, he's saying the wrong things, then I hope that you can now rejoice in me being more accurate with my terminology. Uh, but that's not gonna ever happen, let's be honest here. Starting off, wake up the next morning in Plymouth, which is a little coastal town there. And the idea was that that friend that I'd met up with uh, from Instagram was like, oh hey, get a train ticket from Exeter instead of Plymouth, and then we'll drive through the Dartmoor National Park or whatever, and then I'll drop you off at Exeter, and then you can take the train back to London. I'm like, all right, sounds sick. The idea was she was gonna pick me up at whenever, uh, sometime in the early morning. I was like, all right, sick. So I got ready, and I'm waiting outside, and just didn't really show up, and waited for a little bit longer and I was like, all right, never mind. I'm just going to walk to the train station. I'm not going to wait for her anymore. And then she finally comes up and I was like, all right, get on the road, cruising into Dartmoor. And first off, see these ponies, which are uh, adorable. few got very close and were like super friendly and they're wild so it's kind of like, um, you know, be cool, I'm not trying to ride them or anything like that. But then at the same time too, they're like, they go up to like my hip, so I'm like, it's just funny being so much larger than a tiny horse, I don't know. Uh, I'm just used to like full size horses, so it was kind of interesting.
get on the train and I just had like the gnarliest headache. So kind of, I didn't take any video. I took a few photos because I thought it looked cool. But I got to chat with some people on the train. It was super cool. I met this one guy. He was reading... What was he reading? He was reading a book that I had read. And I can't remember, this is like six months ago, so I don't remember exactly what it was, but we talked about that for a little bit. And then he asked me about uh, my camera, because I think of my Mamiya out on the table. And he asked me about it. I was like, oh yeah, it's this. And he's like, oh cool, my wife had Nikons, and she used to love getting Nikons because they'd break and she would just send them back to Nikon and they'd fix them for her. I was like, that makes so much more sense. Like that just, that just changed my perspective on Nikon repairs, because I'm like, oh okay. I can understand now why they're this way. Because they're not meant for chumps like me to try and fix. It's meant to just get sent. So I finally get to the hotel I'm staying at. And it's one of those that's like right by the airport. Nothing really nothing really special. And yeah, I just kinda conk out for the evening. I planned a uh, test to be done in London and I was going to be meeting up with that uh, German guy that I had met previously uh, my last time I went to London and we were going to walk around and take photos and stuff. We were going to meet at this like little market, Saturday, Sunday market kind of deal. So I'm trying to coordinate that with him. Unfortunately, did not get to meet, but went to London, got my test, had just like probably one of my favorite conversations. There was like a lot of conversations I had on the trip that I was like, this is just fantastic. But uh, the guy that was giving me the test, we're sitting in this like, it was like the bottom floor of like this mall complex. There was like four stories or whatever. And the heat was on. And I don't know, I don't, I'm not a person that complains like a whole lot. Like I'll complain about very random things. But for the most part, like, I, I'm really cool with whatever, and that bothers a lot of people because, like, well, you have to have an opinion. I'm like, I just really don't. <laughs> I mean, for the most part, like, things don't bother me too, too much, unless it's, like, oddly specific. But one thing that... One thing that's always really bothered me, for whatever reason, is, like, artificial heat. I just get so nauseous from it. So we're sitting in this thing and I got my jacket on because it's cold outside. I got a mask on, I got a hat on because I look rugged as hell otherwise. And I'm like bundled up, I got my camera and everything like that. And the heat in this building is just awful. It is, it is so, it is so warm. Like it, I was getting a headache and this guy was coming up and he's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, honestly, dude, the heat in here is ridiculous. He's like, I know. Like, I hate the heat. I was like, thank you. Like, I thought I was going crazy. Like, like I just, I don't want to be that guy that complains about things, but like artificial heat just always messes with me. And he's like, I feel the exact same way. And like, you never want to bring it up because it gets so cold here, this, that, and the other thing. But like, oh, it's just terrible. I'm like, I know, it's awful. And then he started asking me like the cameras that I had. I'm like, oh, do you like taking pictures? I'm like, mostly nature stuff, but like street photography is kind of cool. Really, whatever. I'm not terribly particular about the photos I take. He's like, oh, that's really cool. And then he tells me the story about he got off work one day pretty early. And he and his brother like took a car and like drove somewhere. He told me where I don't really remember drove somewhere and like got to watch the sunset and was like looking at the stars and stuff and he's just talking about like how beautiful that was and I was like yeah I just I hate the city like I, I need more nature in my life and all this stuff and it was something I was just like man I really relate to this guy like we both hate artificial heat we both really like to be in the nature and all that stuff I didn't get his name don't know who he was but he seemed really cool so I was pretty happy about that and then I uh Got some coffee, sat at St. Paul's Cathedral and chased some pigeons around, took a few pictures.
And then I saw these dudes that were like ripping BMX bikes, I think. They were doing that. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. So I walked up to them and I was like kind of chatting with them a little bit. And I'm like, I, I'm kicking myself to this day. I didn't get any of their names, none of their contact information. They were super cool. And they were like, we had like this, there was like four of them or whatever. And we just kind of were chatting and I was asking them for like recommendations or whatever. And one of them's like, oh, do you like cereal? And I'm like, eh, I think it's, it's okay. So, oh, well, you got to go to the cereal bar. Like, it's really good. And then the other guy's like, fuck you, man. <laughs> like, he doesn't have to go there. That place sucks. <laughs> it was just like... <laughs> and, then, and then, like, everyone else in the group just started, like, dogging on this guy. It's like, that's a terrible recommendation. What, you want to just send him to the tourist traps? The cereal bar? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it was so funny. And then I asked him for directions to where I was going because... I had no Wi-Fi at this point. I'm like, oh yeah, I just want to go up this way and turn around. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. And then, yeah, again, really should have talked to them more. And like, because they had cameras and stuff with them. We were kind of chatting about like, they had a A7S 3 And then one of them had a Komodo, red Komodo. And I was like, oh, that's nice. It's a nice little like cube camera. But they're also like just stupid expensive. So anyway, um, out of my price range at least. But... Really nice people, didn't get their names, I feel like a fool, but it was still pretty cool. And then I'm walking down the road a little bit more and uh, it's about this point, I ran out of, I don't remember what color film I was shooting at that time. I think it was just like Fuji 200 or something like that, but I ran out of that. So I switched over to the last roll, 35 millimeter I had, which was film washi, something or another i think it was the f50 film wash is very interesting so if you don't know it's this guy he's over in france and from what i understand he works out of a shipping container and he just basically hand makes film black and white film it's super contrasty low asa so it's kind of slow film but some of the images on it are absolutely beautiful like looks like a painting uh, walking to this little market was pretty interesting. I took like one of my favorite photos on the way there. Actually, like this whole trip, like this last day in London, I think I took some of my like just best photos. Uh, there was this one of a lady, she's like sitting, eating like a cup of noodles or something like, like a bowl of noodles and there's like all these people around her. I'm like, what a just beautiful image. I don't know what it was about it, but it just really like, there's so much life in the scene and everyone is like doing their own thing. And it, I guess that's just what street photography is, but kind of living in Phoenix and then now even living here, these aren't like huge metropolitan areas. So street photography is a little bit different because people aren't used to getting their picture taken. Like there's not a lot of like street activity in Phoenix. And if it is, it's for like some special event and everyone's kind of like, skeptical I suppose of like somebody having a camera so I'm walking around and at this point I'm trying to find that guy the German guy and I have no, like no Wi-Fi so I have no means of like really getting a hold of him but I go to this market I'm sitting there waiting trying to find Wi-Fi and stuff like that and I thought oh, I'll just walk around a little bit and then I walk out a little further this other dude comes up and he's like, oh, that's a really nice camera. And we'll revisit him. I think his, his name's Jonathan, really nice guy. He and his girlfriend were there. We chatted for a bit and then said bye. And I'm still waiting for this guy. He never shows up. I finally got Wi-Fi and I messaged him. And he's like, oh yeah, no, I was down there for a minute, but uh, I had to go back. And I was like, all right, no worries. So didn't end up meeting up with him. I walked down the street a little ways, found this, uh, this guy selling cameras, so I'm like going through, kind of checking all of them and stuff. I was like, should I buy a camera here? Like, that'd be kind of fun. I was like, I don't know. And the, the prices he was selling them at were kind of exorbitant, to be sure. So I didn't really mess with that. Walking back, though, there's this guy that like has the four chess sets in front of him. He's playing chess with people on the street. I'm like, oh, I've always kind of wanted to do this. So we play a little game of chess. I just get my ass handed to me because... He wants to play like a game of like blitz chess or whatever, so it's like minute per, and I've like never done that. Like, and by no means am I good. Like, I have like some opening techniques. I have some of the end game 
but I'm not like really great at it. So the blitz chest, and there was like this homeless guy that kept walking behind me. And he was like, oh, are you American? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you want to die? Like, he just kept asking me if I wanted to die, which is a little alarming, <laughs> to be honest. So I had that going on. <laughs> and it just got demolished. But it was really cool watching him get a play chess. And I took another one of my favorite photos of these people playing chess. And there's just this little kid in the background, like, watching. I don't know, there's something about that scene, too, that I really enjoyed. So anyway, um, walk down the street a little bit more and run into my buddy Jonathan and his girlfriend again. I'm like, yo, what up, man? How's it going? And this guy pulls out an AE1 program, I think. I think it was AE1 program. He's like, look what I just bought. And he just bought it from the street vendor. And I was like, no kidding. He's like, yeah, you know, just I really wanted to get into it. I was like, oh, that's so, so cool. So that really made my day too. Like it was just, it was a really good day. So walking back and da, 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 da. nothing too eventful happened afterwards until I'm walking down the street a ways and run into this guy. Go, oh, hey man, nice camera. Like, oh, thanks, dude. I was like, you know what, I'll go to a pub because I feel like that's a thing that I should do. I feel like, you know, that's kind of the, the touristy thing and I felt like if I'm not going to go to the cereal bar and be a tourist, I might as well go to a pub. So I did that and got like just the worst food. Like, people goof about uh, British food. It was so bad and bland. I was like, you got some hot sauce or salt or something for me. enjoyed that more touristy aspect of of all of it and then I got back to the hotel a little bit late I got the coffee got back into the room and then conked out and then the next day like I said early flight back to the US and I wasn't like terribly nervous I got my negative test back, so we were good on that front.
but yeah, that's pretty much it. That was my whole trip. I hope you enjoyed this little series. Um, it was kind of fun putting it together. It was a little stressful because there's just a lot of content and there's a lot of stuff that like I thought was really cool, but I'm like, that's, it's more cool to me because I was there. So I have to kind of and cut things out that like just don't really portray as much fun for a spectator. So I hope I did a good job with that. I hope that it was enjoyable for you to watch. I've got some more bigger travel projects in the works. So I hope that this kind of was something you dug. I obviously also have a lot of repair stuff planned too. So we'll get back to that content as well. But now that I got this off my shoulders, so to speak, it'll be a lot easier for me to jump into these other projects and not feel like, you know, I'm juggling too, too much. So anyway, I do hope this is something you enjoyed watching because I did enjoy making it for the most part. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to comment down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Appreciate you watching. I'll catch you on the next one.